Hey guys, Pixel Dan coming to you from PowerCon, standing here with Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. How's it going, Scott? Hey, it's awesome. Good to see you again, my friend. You too. So we've got some new figure reveals right here at PowerCon, and I would love for you to show us everything you've got on display. Yep, quite literally off the sculpting table. The horse has been like literally hand carried these on the airplane. So you are <laughs> awesome. seeing there's nothing else. <laughs> So uh, yeah, uh, well we're a little out of order chronologically, but we'll just go left to right in the case here. Okay. So let's see, the first one up here, this is uh, coming in April, our Snake Mountain stands. So uh, obviously it's not final, it's not attached, there'll be some pegs, it'll be similar to the Gray Skull stands. This will attach in a couple places, and then you can see the way it's shaped, they'll link up. So if you have two of them right. next to each other, you can sort of build it out like the Gray Skull stands. Okay, yeah. So it, literally, if you have the Gray Skull stands, you know what you're getting. Basically, same kind of thing, except themed for Snake Mountain. So what a shocker. Um, so, so, hey, you can't stand your figures, now you, now you get this. Awesome. All right. And is it, I noticed it's kind of black. I didn't know if it was more purple in the slideshow earlier. Is it going to be kind of like this, just um, black and red like this? Or? You can see me. <laughs> Final color. That's the fun. All right, there we go. <laughs> it, it lets me, there you go, straight from the horse. Straight from now. Corn Boy. All right. <laughs> this is the final color. Look what happens when you could yell over at the next booth and the sculptors are sitting there. How cool is that? All right, so then we got uh, Beastman's Griffith here. God, do I want to try Which is, this? I totally did not expect to see something like this. This one's a total surprise to me. I'm try for this. Oh my God, what am I doing? Whoa! Okay. Okay, I'm insane for doing this. Let's get lots of shots here. So this uses the Battle Cat buck, and this was actually planned from day one. Uh, we, when we tooled Battle Cat, we knew we'd be using him for the Griffin. New saddle, Swift Winds wings, new head. Check out some of those details on the uh, beak that Eric did. I mean, amazing detail on the beak there with the crack. Um, new uh, back feet, he's got the chicken feet, <laughs> just like a Griffin would. New tail with the two tails. And uh, now your evil warriors can take to the sky and terrorize other people in the sky. So yeah, Very cool. I, I'm so really the jaw, excited. the jaw opens and closes. Uh, yeah, and the, yeah too? Uh, not on not this, on this but, one, yeah. but the final one yeah. will. Yep. Okay. Whoa. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to be very gentle with this because it's made of not good material for. Don't everything. knock anything over, Scott. Yeah, I don't. I've, I have a history <laughs> of doing that whenever we do this. What am I going to break now? Okay, so that was the Griffin. So he'll be out in April, May, April. I can't remember. It's one of those months. He's the next quarterly slot. So okay. Star Sisters are slot one at sixty. This is slot two at thirty. So for those of you playing at home, that means you've got two forty dollars slots left for the rest of the year. What could they be? All right. Uh, moving on, the middle figure here is this is a. Uh, Temple of Darkness Sorceress. So I've seen a lot of fans already asking today, you know, is this movie inspired or is this, uh, you know, it's from Temple of Darkness, the mini comic. <laughs> if you have the Temple of Darkness mini comic, that's what she wore in it. Uh, we actually, we wanted, we were looking at doing, we want to do a traveling convention figure for 2012 for the 30th anniversary. This year we did three JLU three packs that went to all the non San Diego right. Comic Con shows. So I think this year was like C2E2, WonderCon. Uh, New York, uh, and we didn't wind up going to Dragon Con. So this will be the same thing. It'll be at all the traveling shows. If there's a Power Con next year, we'll definitely be there with her. Oh, sound. excellent. Awesome. So she'll be available at Power Con. If there, I assume there'll be a Power Con because it's going great. Um, so it, it, it is a straight redeco. Uh, it does not come with Zor. Instead, it comes with this awesome orb holder. does not come with the orb. So this is the... <laughs> is it glued? No. <laughs> this is the orb that came with King Grayskull. Right. Um... Uh, but so, but obviously it fits perfectly in there. I'll give you some detail here because it's actually really cool. You can see they sculpted some symbols on here. There's there's actually language on each side, and then there's the uh, hero symbol, the He-Man symbol, and the sorcerer symbol on there, uh, with different uh, lettering at the bottom that tells the origin of the of the uh, orb, which is also told on the bio. So. That's how that works, and that obviously. And we finally have somewhere to put that marble place, that yeah. just rolls off the shelf. I use, I use, <laughs> I literally have mine with blue goo sitting at King Grayskull's feet. So oh, okay. I'm very excited to. Uh, this is the only one in the office, and Terry keeps it on his desk, and I keep trying to steal it, <laughs> so mine doesn't roll. All right, so I'm not going to take her down, but the wings work the same way okay. as the other sorceress. It's a little fragile, um, but so that's. Uh, okay. I know a lot of people are saying they want that as their default sorceress already. So all right. Rolling over here, our next monthly figure. Will he come down without breaking? I think so, because we actually blue-gooed him to a stand. 
All right. So here's Stinkor. So Stinkor does use the Beastman body buck like the uh, original card art. The figure used the old Merman body, but he's, as a hairy character, it made more sense to go that. He's got a new backpack, which is removable, so the armor can be used later for uh, Mechanek, assuming we would do him. I can't imagine not, eventually. <laughs> but it doesn't mean he's coming next month. A lot of people think that when we tool something, that like, yeah. oh, well, now you have the part for this, so it means this character is coming in a week, and that's not necessarily true. So he's got two heads. Um, you know what? I'm going to put him down to show that, well, yeah, it's going to be easier to not play with him while I explain. So let's see, this piece here, it works similar to bow, where this little circle here pops out, and then this will oh. pop in its place. So it's like a turning knob to turn on his gas. Huh. So it'll attach right there, or, you know, like, I think it's supposed to go like that. So you could either do vintage or you could do more 2002 kind of extra little doohickeys. Okay. So that's what that is. So that'll pop out just like bows. He's got the vintage shield and then this new awesome blaster and the new backpack. The head... Uh, did they glue him? The... Come on. There we go. So the head has a removable oh, gas wow. mask. And then... So he's got... The mer I think this is the merman head, right. repainted, and then this is an all new new Stinkor head. You know, it's very you know, it's basically just taking Stinkor to the next to what would have been like a unique head. Ears are a little more pointed. Yeah, and, yeah. and then uh, there's some blue goo there, but it'll stick. It'll, it, Terry's actually. I remember when this came in the box. Terry, he was like, oh, "Oh great, the horseman sculpt this awesome gas mask. I'm the one who has to figure out how to get it to stay on the face without a peg hole." So he's trying some like form fit or something. Oh. We're still not sure how that's going to work, but that's what Terry. A lot of people wonder what do the horsemen do versus what does Mattel design, and that's what Mattel design does. They right. they figure out how to translate the sculpts into actual toys that work. So a lot of props to Terry and Bill for what they do. All right. So we'll just kind of put that. That's yeah. I'm gonna like screw this up. All right. We'll just put that head on there for now. <laughs> Time for a head swap. <laughs> All right, there you go. Now he's got the vintage head and the gas mask. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got that. All right, let's get slush head now. Oh, my God, I'm, like, so afraid of dropping. Yeah, another new adventures character yeah. already. That's that's yeah, nice. It, I like that. It, it's always hilarious. You know, everyone's always... Fans always tend to ask for whatever's not the next month's figure. And then, like, we wind up, oh, like, you're not doing enough new adventures. Well, just hold on. So yeah, he, he came out really great. A yeah, um, awesome. lot of you know shared parts, you know whiplash arms uh, and, and legs there. So you can fill him up with water yourself. We're gonna have it. It'll be like sealed so that if you put water, he'll you can put water in there. He's got his blaster. These will be you know on bendies. Um, yeah, I think pretty self-explanatory. Slash head. Now is it is it Mike Block? Is that the guy who Mike uh, Bach? Mike Bach. Mike Bach. Shout out for Mike Bach. Right, there so, we go. So he can, <laughs> Mike, you can now change your avatar. You got your mosquito. <laughs> there you go. Maybe one day you'll get your mosquito. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So how's the how's the uh, liquid gonna work in the helmet? Have you guys actually figured that out yet? Because obviously. For, for, for slush head? Yeah. Like so, you said it'll be sealed. Well, that does that well, mean it won't be removable on the top it'll, or? It'll be totally removable. Okay. You can put water in yourself and then like cover it I guess maybe like have so it you ups, have to like hold it upside, upside down, down and then put it, put it on put it on and then the water will stay okay it's, like it'll be it won't drip down you'll make it so it doesn't leak out yeah. okay got it yeah so you, got yeah it. upside down flip over the same in the same way not keloy in the in the uh, green lantern classics line okay it'll all right the same except I think the water actually leaks out of that <laughs> one. all right let's just see if we can attach that correctly for the display all right so there's slushy all right this little guy oh my god they made this as a toy all right, so this is the mighty specter, like the goddess or fearless photog, but with both. So yes, this is my creation. This was a character that, that I created uh, when I was a kid, literally. I sent him into the vintage contest. Uh, I sent him into Marvel when I was like 12, and I have a rejection letter from them. <laughs> like it's a form letter. They just like hand wrote my name in a slot. I framed it and put it in my scrapbook. So uh, he is the heroic master of time travel. He's not, a, he's not a playing card theme. People are like saying, oh, he's got diamonds and spades. Like, it's actually, those aren't meant to be diamonds. They're just like 
oh, okay, eyes. I see. Yeah. They're not like they're not supposed to be diamonds, and it's not a rip off of Venom and Grendel and and uh, Deadpool because I created him like 1982, um, and I, like he, I I found the old original drawing and then I gave it to Terry and Terry rendered it as a Motu character, adding like shared parts like the um, bracelet and the trap jaw boots because it was very important that the characters feel like they're part of the Motu world. Right. Um, we didn't want them to feel like they were just some random character. And he was always supposed to be a like a time-traveling secret agent. So when I told Terry that, and I said he, I wanted him to have a wrist guard that allowed, that was sort of his, like, that was his flux capacitor. So Terry designed the wrist guard to look like the cosmic, the cosmic key. key. How about that? So I was like, when he showed that to me, I was like, oh, that's perfect. I think it's actually going to be removable. So the key, the key comes off. And there's going to be a, so you see that, this little green thing here, and there's also one in the gun. You can also see, I want to make sure we get this on camera, there's, there's, it's an ammo clip. So there's more in his bandolier there around his leg. So the idea is that he's taking those out and either jamming them in his plasma gun or putting it into the time travel device, which not only powers the time travel suit, but... Um, there's another accessory that, that uh, Eric hasn't finished yet that's a laser knife that comes out of this. Oh, wow. So okay. the idea is that the plasma is both um, powering his gun or he can take the clips and plug them in there and then it projects a knife out. Okay. That's You can wow. plug in and out. Um, and there's actually one, I even asked, specifically said make sure one of the slots is missing. <laughs> so, so that as if like that's the one that's, that's loaded the one that, into okay. the gun right now. And the gun will obviously fit in the holster. Um, the armor is removable, just like you know any other figure would snap off. Um, oh, and okay, one other. F so obviously his name is the Mighty Specter. A lot of fans also know there's a there's a character uh, that they, they modeled looking like me. That was one of the Royal Guards. That since he looked like me, design uh, had offered me the chance to name that character, and so I named him Lieutenant Specter. Right. Thinking there's I'm never gonna make a Mighty Specter action figure, so okay, I'll get my name in the line that way. And then when, it, when I was offered one of the two Mattel slots, Terry Higuchi, by the way, will be doing the other slot. Um, that will be after Jeff's figure. So Jeff is next. Um, so since I'd already used Mighty Specter as the guard, but I really wanted to use the original name, Mighty, the Mighty Specter as, as the, the, the new character. So when we went to the, the writing department, we, we actually made it the same, in a, a later iteration of the same character. Oh, wow. So, that so guard, this is the this same is, character. Yeah, so it's the same guy. So technically, I guess that's me under there. Um, not really, <laughs> but he looks like me, I guess. If you took the, there's not going to be an alternate Toy Guru head. So, um, but yeah, it, it's going to be like continuing that that Royal Guard story and how he goes from being a Royal Guard to getting this suit and how he winds up being a time traveler. And one of the things uh, upper management asked when we originally proposed the 30th anniversary line was that the new characters we create link parts of the lore together that were missing or needed further explanation. So uh, both Terry, Jeff's, and my characters, not as much Drago Man, um, are going to sort of tie, help tie continuity together. We, okay. we did that very deliberately. But it also worked because I, he was always a time traveler. So, uh, so he's a kind of a guy who sort of shows up and can save the day and then disappear in time again. <laughs> That's sort of like why he's a specter. He sort of, you know, disappears. Right. Who, who saved the day? Where was that guy? <laughs> oh, I don't know. So I'm so obviously... Is it He's not going to steal He-Man's thunder, though, is no, he? I mean, no, come no, on. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> He-Man still is number one. So, so awesome. Be like number 58. Awesome. So that's all the new reveals you got here. Yep. Now, I understand that you've also got, what, some early prototypes of some of the stuff you guys showed off at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. So we can kind of see how some of these figures work and move. Yep. That's exactly what. So what awesome. these are, are, let's see if that'll just stay right there. These are called first shots. So this is what we get back after the tool is completed. When the factory just churns out uh, basically a molded in whatever color is in the machine at the time. So there's no, there is absolutely no relation to these kind of colors to final. But it's basically just to allow us to make comments on things that need to get fixed, yada yada. Right. So like source, you know, she will not have a uh, clear wand, but it just was cast in that because that was what color was in the machine at the time. So to show you how Shadow Weaver works here, you've got the stand that plugs right into the bottom there to give her the little floating effect. So she'll actually stand taller than any other figure. And then this one's actually already popped out, but you can see it's a very flexible material, allowing her to have a lot of arm movement here. Oh, okay, so great. This yeah. one, it actually already popped out, but that's why it's a, can I, yeah, I don't think it's gonna pop back in there. There we go, kind of. 
And it just plugs into yeah. the back of the I mean, arm. It'll, okay. it'll be glued. It'll be. It'll oh, it'll be permanently it'll be, attached. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This, like I said, this is a. This is why it's a very okay. early. Got yeah. It. It'll be attached like that. So, but yeah, it popped out again. But you can see how flexible it is to give her the movement she needs. Uh, she'll turn at the waist. Head, head will come off. There's, there she's without her head. Um, she's, she'll tur she'll have a articulation there, articulation there. Obviously, the hands and everything moves, and that's pretty much it for okay. her. Okay. I really was, it was kind of showing you how flexible that was. Yeah, I mean, and even for a character that doesn't have legs, she still has quite a bit of movement yeah. in her, so you still have some options for posing. Yep, yeah, and you can see Great. she's taller than your average character. And then Sorceress here, and the other one we snagged off of Terry's desk. So obviously both Sorceresses, the same buck, both right. Temple of Darkness and regular, but to show you how, how this works, oh, wow. it's attached at, at the back here. This was, Terry came up with this. So it's attached here with a peg mechanism, so if you want, you can spread it out like that, right? Or you can just fold them up, and because it's a separate piece, so it can be folded down like that. You know, she can do all sorts of stuff with the arms and not have to worry about it. Am I going too fast? I don't know. Oh, I'll make sure for the camera here, we'll kind of spin it. So you can see, I think, I guess, yeah, there you go. Little little one high, so uh, yeah. So you can spread you can spread out the wings, or you can fold them up, and uh, you get a lot. You know, and, and she's got you know movement at the waist. The head will come off like any other figure. Um, you know, normal articulation on the legs, but really it's about how this works here. So it kind of came out really great. Yeah, and that it, actually works really well. And then this is permanently attached there to the back, so that does not come off. That's. But yeah, you, so you can pose them with down, you can pose them up. You know, she, she can get pretty tight there, you know? Excellent, okay, that's awesome, yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the things a lot of people were kind of wondering about too, you know, because the original figure had the wings just attached to the, yeah, yeah, to the exactly. so that is really cool. You'll be, you'll be able to get a nice uh, you know, up or down movement. Awesome. And that, that one will be clear like that, how it kind of fades. Oh, okay, yeah, like the, yeah. you got the little bit of a transparency going on. Yep. And then uh, Photog here. The Fearless Photog. Oh, Shadow Weaver's book. Her wand in orange. <laughs> Again, whatever color was in the machine at the time. All right, so Photog, uh, he also one that Terry kind of made some improvements on. So, but this one came at the, <laughs> the colors in the machine were speckled today. So he's got the gun, you know, he's got the camera gun that's just a camera gun. And the shield is, you can see it's got a clear um, casing like over a lens. it. Yes, yeah, like exactly. So yes. that'll be clear, not speckled. <laughs> And then what's really neat on him, oh, and the uh, chest, this will be a sticker that'll be a lenticular. So you'll see the little men running. The running across, yeah. okay, awesome. And, and then this was something Terry just came up with and added because he's that cool. Uh, there's a little lever here on the top of Photog, and when you push the lever. <laughs> zoom in and out. Can, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a zoom mechanism that will uh, that'll move. And you can see that through the, uh, the holes there. So, there you go. Excellent. That's how that works. Awesome. Great. I, I remember I was trying that in San Diego, and I was like, I yeah, can't right. It wasn't quite working on yeah. the the prototype yeah, figure there. The head will pop off. Oh, and the head is still removable. Yep. Okay, it's that is great. So you can you can put the camera head on Stinkor. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I, I, that's what I'll I'll be putting it on Spectre. So, yeah, that's uh, it actually it's really neat. I think it's the first time we've done full legs with these boots too. Oh, okay. Um, Having oh, the, uh, okay, the not, yeah. there's no boot here. There's no actual okay yeah, boot so top. That, I think that's new too. I can't. I'm pretty sure. I don't think anyone has a. I don't think this is the first figure to not have a boot. Um, and there you go. Awesome. That's Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you once again. So there you go, guys. There's yeah. a ton of amazing new figures coming out once again. A lot of reveals, more reveals than I was expecting to see here. So I think that's terrific. Yeah. And then we got a, a closer look at some of the stuff we, we saw at San Diego Comic Con. So once again, a lot of great things coming from. Classics. Scott, thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. It's always oh, appreciated. Absolutely. And uh, you know, log on to Maddie Collector now. You've got two sub options now. You've got the uh, full 2012 sub. That includes the, fig the monthly figures, the beasts oversized, and the uh, shadow, only way to get Shadow Weaver. And then the new Master Universe 30th anniversary set, uh, figure set, which is Photog, Dragoman, Spectre, Jeff's character, Terry's character, and the new winner of the contest. You could buy one sub, both subs, no matter when you bought the subs, they will ship together. 
So if you, if you haven't bought both, you can still get them and they, you won't be charged double shipping or anything like that. Right, and the uh, 30th anniversary figures are only getting released once, right? No reissues on those? No releases, re releases actually on any of the figures in 2012. Any of the figures in 2012. So yep. if you want to guarantee them, the subscription might be the way to go. We'll still have reissues of some older figures, characters like Beast Man or He-Man or you know, Man at Arms, I know people are asking for. But no one past, I believe, Manny Faces will ever, at, well, I don't want to say ever, but at this point, at least not in 12, will not be reissued. No reissues. So reissues will only be figures before Manny Faces, which includes beasts and includes that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Well, great. Thanks again, Scott. Absolutely. So from PowerCon 2011, I'm Pixel Dan.